Yeah, my name is Ingrid Brostrom. I'm an attorney with the Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment, and I direct the Center's uh, Waste Project. Um, we work predominantly in the Central Valley, um, which is one of the reasons why we represented Button Willow, which is um, a little north of Bakersfield. Uh, but more recently, we have recognized that the uh, state's hazardous waste problem spans um, across California, and uh, LA is uh, disproportionately impacted uh, by hazardous waste disposal. Uh, so I'm here to talk a, a little bit more broadly, um, not just about the Santa Susana Field Laboratory, but what's happening statewide with hazardous waste. And so we come at this um, from a systemic point of view. We're trying to find out what is the root problem where so many communities across California are facing very similar problems. And we identified the Department of Toxic Substances Control as a key player um, uh, and that's failing systemically to protect uh, communities. And so some of the overarching reasons why this department is not protecting communities um, are pretty big picture. One uh, is uh, there's conflicting and unclear agency mission. On the one hand, EPA has delegated to the department the responsibility to protect Californians from hazardous waste. On the other, DTSC has itself identified a second goal, which is to maintain and increase disposal capacity in the state of California. And to do this, um, they've looked at doing two different things. One is to permit new hazardous waste facilities across the state, to blanket the state in hazardous waste facilities. And two is to reduce the number of cleanups um, and, to, and to, uh, to have more uh, waste in place. Um, type methodologies. And this is in direct contrast and directly contradicting its overarching mission and the true mission of the agency, which is to protect community and to protect public health. Secondly, there's a lack of strong and consistent agency leadership. Over the last 10 years, there have been 10 different DTSC directors. That means uh, that no one person has been able to, to steer the ship and to resolve any of the long-standing, multi-decade long problems. Uh, we just got a brand new DTSC director uh, who, will, who started just in December. Uh, so again, the, the previous director lasted two years, um, and that's just a pattern, is that there's nobody who sees a consistent, um, consistent leadership in order to make any of the broad changes that are needed. Industry capture. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen at Santa Susana, and we've seen in other communities across the state, that DTSC has close relationships and inappropriate relationships with the industries that it's supposed to regulate. We see that in very small uh, fines. Um, we see that with uh, allowing serial polluters and serial uh, violators to continue um, getting new permits. Um, uh, we've seen that um, with basically never seeing the agency deny a permit or really crack down hard um, on any industry. I myself worked on a cleanup in the Central Valley where the lead project manager uh, openly told me that he was afraid to do anything that the industry, the, cleanup, the per people responsible for cleanup, uh, wouldn't agree with and had to go through them before approving any of the cleanup plans. There's no accountability, there's no governing board. Um, many boards that you see, I mean many agencies that you see such as the air district or the water um, or districts have a, have a publicly accountable and publicly elected board. Um, DTSC is one of the few California state agencies that has no accountability to the public. Its decisions are made in private. There's no record of how those decisions came to be. And, and there's no way for the public to know what happened or to hold its officials accountable. And finally, California's hazardous waste laws um, allow DT give DTSC unchecked agency discretion. In fact, its own report um, that it commissioned last year found that there's no standardized criteria, uh, for example, to, to determine where hazardous waste facilities should be located and how to make those decisions. So we have a problem with, with the over, o overall agency, and there's these deep-rooted problems. And the result, the result is communities across California uh, that are suffering real serious health impacts. 
and are being put in, in risk because of DTSC's action. However, the second result uh, is that communities are becoming more and more organized. They're identifying, um, they're identifying uh, an, over, an, an overarching problem with the agency, um, and they're starting to not only fight the industry that's responsible for a lot of the toxic contamination across California, but they're also fighting the agency to make it a better and more accountable agency. So I wanted to, I really wanted to focus on the fact that Santa Susana is not alone. That there are many, there's dozens and dozens of other communities across California that are facing the same problems. Uh, one you might be familiar with, it's been in the news a lot lately, lately is Exide um, in, a, in Huntington Park. Um, this facility has operated without a, a permit for, for decades. Um, the Air District said it was, had never seen um, a, a facility present a higher cancer risk um, than more, any of the 450 facilities that it regulates. Um, all testing has shown um, uh, lead and arsenic has migrated off-site and into people's yards. And, um, and right now, you know, they're, they're determining uh, what their cleanup is going to look like. In Autumn Wood in Riverside County, again, we have a, a community um, uh, that suffered real illness. We had uh, two young, healthy women in their 30s uh, die suddenly. Um, residents were so sick that they literally abandoned their homes. Uh, there's uh, private sampling showed benzene, dichloroethylene, and formaldehyde. Uh, here at DTSC, after dragging its feet for years and years, um, when they finally did their, uh, their, their testing, uh, they found that there was no problem and have basically closed uh, closed its investigation. Um, because of so many concerns about its investigation, EPA is now reviewing that decision. FiberTech is in uh, Santa Fe Springs. Again, uh, allowing the facility to operate on expired permits. Uh, hexium chromium is in the groundwater. Um, it's three million times the public health goal. Uh, residents complain uh, near the fence line complain of elevated cancer rates and deaths. And even though the DTSC ordered a cleanup in the 1990s, the facility is yet to comply, yet they are seeking out a new permit, which we expect DTSC to give them. And finally, Jordan Downs, um, it's a housing development in Watts, uh, two dozen DTSC cleanup sites within three miles, uh, yet Jordan Downs is about to be redeveloped, uh, placing uh, new uh, multifamily residences and other businesses on top of the contamination. Um, again, dragged their feet for many years, refusing to do testing. When they finally did testing, half of the, half of the sites uh, exceeded uh, DTSC's uh, lead health standards. Even though uh, lead was found in half the samples, DTSC has deemed this uh, area safe and is requiring no cleanup. So, I mean, this is bad news. We're, we're, seeing, uh, we're, we're seeing communities, and, and I focused a lot on the ones in Southern California, um, and, uh, but there's many others. There's a lot in, in, uh, in the Central Valley and also the Bay Area. And uh, so I've been working on hazardous waste issues for some years, um, and residents and communities have often fought a singular battle about their facility, about their cleanup. Um, and we recognize that we needed to change this dynamic, that we needed to have communities come together to share uh, their stories, to share their experiences, and to really focus on changing the systemic issues. Uh, so we developed uh, last year the People Senate. Uh, it uh, consists of representatives uh, from across the state, from uh, communities impacted by hazardous waste. Santa Susana is a member of the People Senate, and your representatives are here tonight. Um, there's 12 communities represented now. Uh, we have worked to build relationships among these communities um, to build on uh, shared strategies. We've come together to create a vision uh, for how to make DTSC a better agency that's more accountable, uh, more responsive, and more transparent. Um, and we have actually uh, developed uh, a set of shared solutions. So what we have done in just the short time that we've been around, uh, first is we have published a report. This is, uh, in Santa Susana is featured in here. Um, and uh, this outlines the, the shared solutions uh, that the representatives came up with, um, as well as sharing the stories of the different communities that are members. 
Um, and I have some available if people want. Uh, from this, we were invited to develop with uh, Senator De Leon, who is now the, the president pro tem of the Senate, uh, to develop uh, legislation. And we ran that bill last year with, with, all the, with a lot of the DTSC proposals um, and reforms that we wanted to see. And we actually made it all the way through the Assembly and the Senate, only to get vetoed by the governor, sadly. So we, we would be uh, attempting to, to continue our, our efforts um, in the legislature. Uh, we were, were featured on NBC Bay Area. Um, we uh, participated in the Assembly Toxics Committee hearing where we had many of our members come up and share with the Toxics Committee some of the, the problems facing our communities. Um, and Cindy was, uh, was there, and so, so was Davis, to present on behalf of Santa Susana. Uh, we've, of course, met with a lot of the top officials to share these overarching concerns. Um, and we've developed this platform uh, for agency-wide reform, looking not only at each, each community, but looking at how we can make things better for all Californians and all communities facing hazardous waste issues. <laughs>